Greetings everyone, I am Dr. Monica working as associate professor in NIET Pharmacy Institute uh, affiliated to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam University and I am taking the subject Industrial Pharmacy 1 having code BP502T. In this uh, subject having code BP502T, I have uh, take started up with the unit number 5 and the unit number 5 I have divided into th 3 modules. First module I have already covered, the first module was dealing with the cosmetics part and uh, in my last session I have started with the second module that is ma that mainly deals with the pharmaceutical aerosols. Along with that uh, one more module we will cover up uh, that is module number 3 in which we will focus on the packaging containers. So, in this unit uh, that is unit 5 having mod in module 2 as I started in the last session that is pharmaceutical aerosols. In that last session I mainly focused on the topic that is the valve system. I give the, gave the definition of pharmaceutical aerosols, what we mean by pharmaceutical aerosols. Along with that I covered up the part that is valve system which is very much important uh, in the pharmaceutical aerosol from pharmaceutical aerosols aspects. So, in this session what I am going to cover is the contents we will include in this session is mainly the manufacturing part that is how we can manufacture and in one session I will like to cover up the quality control aspects. In previous session we covered up valve assembly uh, and in this session we will mainly focus on the manufacturing part and uh, in one more session we will cover up the quality control test. So, let us start with the manufacturing part in case of pharmaceutical aerosols. First, before starting with the how we generate aerosol products, first we need to understand that what we mean by uh, formulation, that the formulations which we can store in our pharmaceutical aerosol products, those what are those kind of formulations. So, based on the formulation part, we can divide our aerosol into two important components. The whole aerosol formulation consists of two important components that is first one is product concentration, concentrate and second one is your propellant. So, aerosol itself made up of two components, first component is product concentration or product concentrate and second one is your propellant. Now, what we understand by the term that is product concentrate or product concentration that is the formulation part that is it will contain the active ingredient, it will contain the necessary agents which are required for so that our, our, our active uh, ingredient must be in the dissolved form along with that what other agents we can add into the formulation part are surfactants and antioxidants. So, these product concentration concentrate is actually the formulation in which we include active ingredient, we include other necessary agents such as solvents, surfactants, antioxidants etcetera. Along with product concentrate or formulation, we need to have propellant within in our aerosol system. And what those propellants are, they can be can be used in the single contain, container content, or they can be combined together to give a that is mixed blend of that propellants can also be used. So our aerosol whole system consists of two parts. One is product concentrate, and second one is your propellants. Product concentrate contains active ingredient solvent, surfactant that means formulation and propellants are actually the agents which will expel our products from the container outside. So, that is also need to be added into our uh, that is aerosol product. Now, next if we move to the next part that is first we need to understand what kind of formulations we can add in our that is aerosol uh, systems. Now, types of formulations which can be added, the types can be solution types or two phase system, biphasic systems can be incorporated into our aerosol uh, uh, that is containers. And the solution system or two phase system mainly consists of vapor phase and liquid phase. It also include various kinds of volatile substances which may 
lower the vapor pressure of the propellants. So, these kind of agents which contain solution form as well as we can include other formulations like we can include solution systems and we can include water based systems which are three phasic system. Now, how we will say them as three phasic system because it, con it will contain volatile substance, it will contain oils, it will contain water. So, these are uh, uh, also known as water based systems. So, water is used to replace the mainly the non aqueous solvents which are being incorporated in few of the formulations. So, all referred to as water based aerosols product propellant concentration must be in between 25 to 60 percent if we are uh, and, and we, we are adding that is water based formulation in our that uh, uh, our uh, systems. Third thing aquasol systems, aquasol systems are also triphase three phase aerosols that permits large quantity of water to be incorporated into the formulation. The ratio of hydrocarbon and water will be 1 ratio 6. So, these are the main three systems which we can add into our aerosol products. First solution based systems can be added that are generally two phase. Second water based systems can be added to our aerosol products that are three phase systems and last one is aquasol systems and aquasol systems are the systems which contain water in large quantity. So, in this way three types of system you have seen here that we can add or we can put into our aerosol containers. Next part is how we manufacture aerosols. But first, we studied about what kind of formulations we can add in our uh, aerosol uh, containers and after preparing the first we need to prepare those formulations in the lab and after preparing those formulation what we need to uh, do is we have to add them put them into our aerosol containers. Now, aerosol containers as you know will contain formulation along with that they will have the propellant in, in to be added in, in the container. And third thing is that valve system we have to put at placed in the aerosol products. So, three things you need to keep, keep in mind. First is you have to prepare the formulation according to the aerosol products that you must be able to add into the aerosol into the aerosol container. Solution based that may be solution based, that may be water based, that may be aquasol, but that product be like that, that you must be able to add it into the aerosol containers. And for, for manufacturing part, once you have prepared the your that is uh, formulation, after that you have to add that formulation into your containers and after putting it into the containers, you need to place the valve system on the container, the valve system which we have studied in our la last session. In that session, I told you that how valves act and how valves can be used as beta dosed or can be used as spray form, they can generate the product in the form of mists. So, we have to pay place that valve system onto the aerosol container. Now, how we can place that valve system onto the container, how we can manufacture that pharmaceutical aerosol uh, that is product that we have mainly four methods for that out of these two are most commonly used in uh, most of the industries. So, four methods we have for manufacturing of our pharmaceutical aerosols. What are those four methods? First method is pressure filling apparatus, second method is cold filling apparatus, third method is compressed gas filling apparatus and fourth method is rotary. Uh, filling machine method. So, these are the four methods which are being used, but out of these most of the industry mainly uses the pressure method and cold filling method. Now, uh, before starting with the manufacturing part, these we will exp uh, we will have a discussion on this for all the four methods, but before that I would like to uh, tell you that whatever equipment you are going to use to manufacture aerosol products, what you need to do is you have some specialized equipment must be there. Specialized equipment means the equipment must be capable of handling temperature minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Your equipment may will must be uh, that kind of an equipment which can handle a temperature minus 40 degree centigrade as well as a, it must be able to handle the pressure because aerosols are 
pressurized product we have to add propellant into the, the containers so it they must be able to handle high pressure high pressure and low temperature that is minus 40 degree fahrenheit so these two points need to be kept in mind before starting ahead with the the other parts that is uh, four methods which can be used first is pressure filling we can go for we can go for cold cold filling we can go for compressed gas filling and rotary filling methods so let's move towards uh, other the, these methods the filling process actually as we have containers in containers we need to add our formulation and that is product concentrate and second thing what we need to add into our formulation uh, into our container is the propellant now you need to decide when to add the propellant into the system so that is main part need to be focused so filling process is most important in the filling process we can see that the step one is placing of valve and bag inside the cane you must have a cane or you must have a container uh, once you have added your formulation into the container now you have to place the valve system onto the container now uh, along with the valve system also what you need to do is you need to add your propellant into the container now there are two methods one is uh, that is pressure filling second one is cold filling in pressure filling what we do is that we have to place the valve system first and after that we will add the propellant two points need to be kept in mind when to add the propellant and when to place the propellant system so when when we are going talking about the pressure filling system in case of pressure filling system what we will do we will place the valve first after that we will add the propellant into the uh, that is we will do the crimping of the valve system valve system will be crim crimped and after crimping gas will be moved out of the container gas comes out of the container and what you will do you will add your what we call as that is propellant into the valve system after crimping first you need to place the valve onto the container valve system onto the container after placing the valve system you have to crimp the valve after crimping the valve you have to add the propellant through the crimp but from the crimp first you will move the gas out and then your uh, what we call as propellant will be added into the system so pressure you have to control whenever you are adding the propellant into the system you need to control the pressure of the container after that product filling is being done and actuators are being placed so there as you can see there are five main steps first step is you have to place the valve second step is you have to crimp the valve after crimping third step you need to add the propellant into the container through the crimp uh, after removing the gas whatever gas was there within the container that must be removed and uh, your propellant must be added and third for third step you have to note down the pressure of the system and fourth step you have to fill the container with proper amount of propellant and in the la last once you have uh, put on the propellant you have to what do you need to do is you have to actuate you have to play uh, close the valve system with the help of actuator and the cap cap is placed at place so these are the main filling processes which you need to do in uh, that, that is aerosol preparations so this is the machinery you can see that we have such kind of pressure systems and these pressure systems as you can see these are the containers in which we will add our uh, that is formulation and after having adding the formulation this system will put the valve system over here and this whole system will what it will do it will perform all the such steps like it will crimp the valve system at the opening after crimping propellant will be added and prop after adding propellant what will happen so at a time many containers in case of as case, in case of rotary machines lot of containers can be filled at a, at a one time so after that so uh, whenever you are talking about pressure filling systems in pressure filling systems as you can see first what we need to do is unscramble that means valve system is unscrambled the valve system air must be cleaned from the container whatever air is present within the container that air must be removed next step concentrate filler that means whatever concentrate or whatever product you want to add into the aerosol container you will fill that uh, concentrate into that valve placers 
So these are the steps which we you need to follow for the filling apparatus for in pressure filling in the case of pressure filling. First, you have to unscramble, remove the air, add the concentrate. After that, place the valve uh, at position. After placing the valve, valve will be crimped. After crimping, propellant will be added. Crimping the valve, remove the gas, add the propellant, and after that. it is placed into the water bath and wa uh, why we use water bath water bath will gives us that our uh, there should be after um, you have added the propellant you will seal the container and after sealing you the container must pass through the water ba bath it will indicate that your uh, there there is no leaking within the container so the, your aerosol containers must be leak proof so that's why they are passed through the water bath so that they can show whether they are leaking or Not or if the, any bubble kind of a thing uh, generates, that means your containers are uh, that is uh, leaking. So that in that case you have to remove those containers. After that comes the labeling part, coating part, and packaging part. So these are the steps you need to follow uh, in the pressure filling systems. And how pressure pressure filling systems looks like? You can see in the diagram. These are the systems which are. pressure filling system and in case of pressure filling system you can see there is a burret and in this case what will happen you either you have to place the container here whatever container you want to fill you have to place that container here it will provide the valve system valve pre system in place we will place and after that this system will crimp it and actually it provide the pressure into the container it consists of pressure burret this burret is known as your pressure burette and what we call this as pressure by we call it as pressure burette because it will provide the necessary pressure so that uh, the your propellant can move into the container as propellant will not be able to move into the container until and unless you will not provide any kind of pressure so pressure system is being applied and this burette will act as a pressure system and it will uh, only add certain amount of pro propellant that is small volume of liquefied liquefied gas into the container under pressure propellant is added through an inlet valve jo inlet valve hote hai that inlet valve is always at the top or at the bottom of the uh, that is uh, this burette either at the top or at the burette pressure is applied upward or pressure may applied downward depending upon where you are filling the container so uh, valve can be the inlet valve may be located at the bottom or may be at it may be located at the top the propellant is allowed to flow with its own vapor pressure in the containers once the pressure is equivalent within the container as well as in the burret at that moment your propellant will stop moving into the container the equivalence point will indicate that further propellant will not move into the container if we want to add more propellant in that case we have to use other systems like pistons may be used used to apply the pressure so that we can add more uh, propellant into the container so propellant the trap air escapes out of the uh, upper valve uh, jo uh, whenever you are apply uh, that is adding the propellant your gas will move out and propellant will moves in and the point at which equivalence come that is uh, that your point at which the pressure inside the container and pressure in the burette are equivalent at that moment your propellant will stop moving the propellant stops flowing when the pressure of the burette and the containers becomes equal if further problem propellant is to be added into the container a hose leading uh, to a cylinder of nitrogen is attached and or piston may be attached to exert more pressure onto the container and more propellant can be moved into the container so in that way either you can add nitrogen cylinders to put pressure or you can add piston system to put pressure so that more propellant or more additional propellant you can add into the aerosol container another pressure device makes use of piston arrangement this type of device cannot be used for filling inhalation aerosols pressure filling apparatus is never used for that is uh, the inhalation aerosols or meter dose containers if we want to prepare, generate meter dose aerosols in that case we go for different method rather than going for pressure filling pressure filling is just used for simple aerosol containers
Now procedure of filling, how we fill? This method involves filling of concentrate as I have already explained in my previous slides that steps are same. What you can, you will do? That is first place the valve, crimp the valve, remove all the, uh, that is gas and after removing the gas you can add concentrate and after adding concentrate you can put the valve after placing the valve crimp crimp after crimping you can add your propellant into the system so the uh, whenever the valve is placed on the container crimped through the opening of the valve the propellant 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 goes inside the container since the opening of valve is sometimes smaller in that case we can also use the valve tap so that we can increase the amount of concentrate filling. So we have under the, uh, we can place our that is uh, valve system, we can use that is what we call as um, filling machine in this case, what we can use that is limit, that will limit the production as the valve uh, um, size is very much smaller that is 0 0.018 to 0 0.03 inches that will limit the production and limitation of production that will make the system slow. So in they, they, that case we can go for rotary filling machines as I have uh, shown you in my previous slide. In this slide you have seen that rotary filling uh, uh, machines are being used so that we can enhance or we can increase the productivity of our apparatus. So in that case instead of using single we can multiple containers can be placed and multiple fillings can be done so that this is known as your rotary machine to enhance the that is your production part that number of products which are being generated at a time that must be more as compared to the single generation. So in that way we can go for this thing and after that what are the advantages of pressure filling that is we can you add our suspensions, we can add our emulsion systems, we can add our uh, that is uh, suspension systems but contamination due to moisture is less in this case and loss of propellant is also less. What are the disadvantages? That certain types of metering walls can be handled only by cold filling. Metering walls or metering dose containers as I told in, we can prepare by pressure filling that for that we have to go for cold filling. And now what we do in cold filling? In case of cold filling we will not uh, put pressure as you can see in this diagram these are the form cylinder or nitrogen cylinders and these are the mainly the uh, this is a container filled with sol solid carbon dioxide. So container in which there is solid carbon dioxide this whole container is filled with that and this is known as copper tubing and in copper tubing and from here you can see it is a container need to be full air so aerosol containers will be placed here and your uh, that is gas will comes out from here and from here propellant move it through the copper tubing and in copper tubing what will happen as we are having solid carbon dioxide here and we have uh, that is agents which can reduce the temperature which, will, which can cool our propellant when our propellant will move through the copper tubing that propellant will be cooled out with the help of this copper tubing and cooled propellant then will be pushed into the aerosol containers through this system but in this case what will happen as you can see that as we see in the previous slide that in pressure case, pressure filling conditions what we were doing that we were adding first the we were first placing the valve system and after that we were adding the propellant but in this case what we will do cold propellant will be added into the aerosols and the pressure will be created when it will come to the room temperature. We do not need to put any kind of pressure in this case. That is why in cold filling first we will add propellant, after that we will place the valve. Valve is placed after adding the propellant but in case of pressure filling we were placing valve first and after that we were adding the after crimping and crimping after crimping we were adding the propellant by pressure into the system but in cold filling there is no need to place valve first what we will do we will add propellant first after that we will seal the container with the help of valve systems. So in this way we have studied about cold filling apparatus different as the temperature needs to be reduced to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit using that cold filling apparatus so that our propellant can move into the that is aerosol container. So this is the mechanism how we can fill. 
Next last one is your compressed gas system. In this case, only compressed gases can be added like carbon dioxide into the propellants. So, by compression, by compressing the gas at high pressure, we can add our gases into the propellant container through the valve systems. The apparatus consists of delivery gross and a flexible house pipe which can withstand 150 pounds per square inch gross of pressure. So, compressed gases can be added by this pressure system, but by compress first we have to get compress the gas and after that it will move into the aerosol containers. So, procedures we can see that the product concentrate is filled into the container, valve is placed, same procedure as we have studied for the pressure filling system, same procedure will be used, but what we do first in this case one more extra step we need to add that is we have to compress the gas. Compressed gas can only be added and which can handle 150 gauge of pressure. So, rotary filling I have already explained rotary filling that it generates more uh, that is containers at a time. So, these are the references which you can follow for this. Thank you so much.